One of the most impressive things is how tough they are to keep the magic of the show going. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're unmasking some of the behind the scenes tidbits masquerading behind the masked singer. Fever dream, can't you see it getting closer? Just surrender because you Gosh, feel I the know feeling that over. Number 10, Celebrity Stand-Ins. If you've seen the UK series, you'll know host Joel Domit practically made a catchphrase of announcing that the Clue packages feature stand-ins rather than the actual celebs. Pay very close attention to tonight's Clue packages, parts of which feature stunt doubles because our celebs were just too busy interviewing stunt doubles. <laughs> you can never have too many. No, don't worry. The people we see singing on stage and interacting with the judges are the actual celebrities. But that's pretty much it. These are busy people after all, and one way to entice them to sign up for the show is to assure them it won't take up too much of their time. And after years of living in the public eye, you're in my house now. Welcome to my empire. <laughs> According to Rabbit, aka Joey Fatone, he recorded the dialogue for his clues. However, even he doesn't know who was burrowing in the costume during the clue packages. As a young cotton tail, I sought fame and everyone wanted a piece of me. But life isn't always carrots and cream. He's a child actor. Number 9. Who chooses the songs? Ever wondered who chooses the songs the contestants sing? Well, according to showrunner Izzy Pick Ibarra, it's a team effort. Contestants can compose their dream song list, and sometimes the execs help narrow it down by selecting tunes that amplify the celebrity's voice or persona. Ice Cream, aka Tyler Ninja Blevins, shared that producers often wanted more widely recognizable tunes, but ultimately he got to choose his set list. Nobody tell me Meanwhile, Flower, aka Patti LaBelle, said she submitted a list of songs she'd like to perform, but numbers like Eye of the Tiger weren't her call. Her voice is pretty recognizable, so we wouldn't be surprised if the producers threw in a few curveballs to lead viewers off her scent. Number 8. No fraternizing between contestants and panelists. Think the panel has secret insights or uncovers backstage clues? Think again. It's like two separate shows going on. It is like contrary to popular belief. Like no one know. We don't know who the contestants are. Nick Cannon, the host, doesn't know. It's a. It's like two separate productions in one. Executive producer Craig Plestis disclosed a strict off-camera interaction ban for contestants and panelists. They're strategically separated across the studio, making it tough for even the best sleuth to track down the contestants. Even if they managed, they'd still need to get past security. Sound sources are also systematically silenced, wiping out any chance of catching voices. Even Jenny McCarthy was surprised by this meticulous planning, apparently only learning about it online. I still have no idea. Stage managers, choreographers, camera people, sound and lighting crew are all kept in the dark. Backstage, only a few individuals know who's behind the masks. Everyone else, from writers to directors, refers to them by their characters. Imagine finding out you've been calling Dick Van Dyke Gnome for weeks. It's an honor to have you on our show. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't believe you're here. I gotta, I'm trying to like play it cool. Number seven, contestants are bound under lock and key. As you might know, the masked singer is typically pre-recorded. Now, many of us will know what it's like holding onto a juicy secret and how the longer you keep it to yourself, the more you want to scream it from the rooftops. To avoid being recognized, even their friends, family, agents, and managers are disguised at all times. So how does the masked singer get around that? Well, according to Drew Carey, aka Llama, contestants had to sign a hefty NDA. I'm not allowed to talk about the show with anybody. I signed this big NDA, so I'm not, I'm not getting sued because I got in touch with Wayne Brady and told him good job. 
<laughs> in fact, Plestis emphasized that more efforts went into preserving the show's secrets than planning its entire structure. Contestants are actually allowed to tell a couple of other people on the condition that they also sign a non-disclosure agreement and conceal their identity if they ever come to set. Even their agent and publicist or man, their whole squad, they have to wear masks just in case if like, like let's say we would have the same agent or something like that, like, like we, we don't know who anybody is. Number six, behind the costumes. The Masked Singer showcases a stunning array of costumes. Thanks to the creative brilliance of costume designer Maria Toybina, later Tim Chappell, and their skilled teams. I think costuming tells a story that a lot of us really can't find the words for, and that's what's so mesmerizing about it, even seeing these costumes perform or take character of their own. These outfits actually play a key role in getting celebrities on board. Then, contestants dive into a personalized selection process, choosing outfits that resonate with them aesthetically or on a deeper level. Broccoli was easy because I like broccoli, I and mean, I eat broccoli all the time. I picked the whatchamacallit because you don't really know what it is. It can be anything you want to be. It has my favorite colors on it as well. When they sent me the pictures, I just said, this is just funny. Despite being tailored for stage functionality, these costumes are as elaborate and robust as they look. Fun fact, Lion's mask is molded from clay and then adorned with a full gold paint job. Wearing these costumes is no cakewalk either. They're heavy and can sometimes limit visibility. One thing to sing a song and it's another thing to sing a song with a giant costume on. The weight of the costume made it difficult. Kind of hard to see uh, and the helmet was huge. All you can see is this. Contestants can't even dress themselves. They're assigned to a team to assist them at every step, even when they need to use the facilities. Number 5. Contestants get to spruce up before unmasking. Celebrities are generally used to looking their best when they appear on television. Who's behind the mask? And who's about to take it all off? Well, not all, just the mask. <laughs> However, that's less of an issue when you're hidden under those masks. Well, until your big reveal, of course. If any potential future contestants are watching, don't worry, because you won't be revealing yourself as a hot, sweaty mess. Audience, say it with me. Take it. Once eliminated, celebs are swiftly taken backstage for hair and makeup before anyone gets a peek under the mask. If you thought sitting at home biting your nails as the crowd chants take it off was stressful, imagine being in the studio and having to wait for the mystery celeb to get their glam on first. My goodness, Tori Kelly! Yeah! Singer, songwriter, and one of the yeah! greatest voices of this generation! Number 4. No Phones Inviting audiences into a show bound by extreme secrecy poses risks, especially in the digital age. Even with NDAs, maintaining confidentiality is likely still challenging. Phones and other electronic devices are strictly prohibited on set, including among staff members. Our studio audience is also under extreme scrutiny. They must sign contracts binding them to secrecy, and all electronics are banned. Executive producer Izzy Pick Ibarra revealed a hilariously savage measure they implemented to keep people off their devices. If someone really, really needs their phone, they can use it, but there's a catch. They have to wear something they call a shame sash. We wonder if they also get everyone to chant, put it on, put it on. That would be pretty embarrassing. Well, that's one way to keep everyone in line, isn't it? Number 3. Unconventional Talent Pickups Ever spotted those photos of the Masked Singer contestants rocking those Don't Talk To Me hoodies? They have a hoodie on that says Don't Talk To Me the entire time we're here. I want that hoodie, by the way. Well, that's just the beginning of the secrecy measures to keep their identities locked down. First off, they go undercover before arriving on set, meeting drivers at random spots. You leave your hotel, the valet says there's a car here for Jingle Bells, so already you look like a stripper. You pull up to the lot, and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta put my gloves on. My hands couldn't be showing, my legs couldn't be showing. For example, Fatone shared he was told to meet his driver at a 7-Eleven, 
and found his disguise ready in the car. In another instance, Carey said he was instructed to go to the Grove Shopping Center, where he donned his disguise and hopped into a different car. Sometimes they even double bluff, using two vehicles to confuse snooping paparazzi hellbent on spoiling the fun. From rehearsals to live shows, contestants must remain incognito until they're off-site and out of sight. It's such an unusual situation. I probably have more security than the President of the United States. Number 2. Top Secret Unmaskings Okay, so we've established the heist-level secrecy that goes into making this show a success. But let's talk about what happens among the contestants. You think that maybe we might know who each other are? We have no idea. Like the panel, they're intentionally kept apart, from rigidly allotted rehearsal time to separate dressing rooms. According to Margaret Cho, aka Poodle, she'd only cross paths with her fellow contestants on stage. Meanwhile, Wayne Brady, aka Fox, said that at first he couldn't even hear the others singing. However, as the group dwindled, he would walk by the stage while the other singers were in sound checks and started forming his own guesses. It is amazing. And uh, it works really well. In fact, I never even heard anyone sound check, except once I overheard who I now know was Chris Daughtry. Generally, contestants are in the same boat as us viewers. They discover how the episode unfolds when it airs. Still don't know who anybody is, and it's been killing me because I probably would fangirl over everybody. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Not all audiences see contestants take it off. Thinking about catching a taping of The Masked Singer? Well, here's the scoop. You might not actually get to see any unmasking. If you're content with chanting take it off and heading home, you're golden. However, as one audience member shared, before the big reveal, the still-masked celeb slips backstage. Meanwhile, most of the audience is sent home. Only a lucky bunch, reportedly often those with personal ties to the singer, stick around for the real deal. The panel definitely wasn't expecting my voice to come out of this face, and you probably weren't either. So yeah, if you're in the audience, get ready to do a lot of acting. If you go to a live taping, you might only find out who was unmasked alongside the rest of us watching at home months later. So there's too much lying going on, I have to repent. And now I can finally say, hey everybody, it's me, Sherry. And I loved it, it was fantastic. Did any of our facts surprise you as much as your most shocking celeb reveal? Let us know in the comments. I'm really good at lying, so I'm gonna try it at the banker and uh, the tax man. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.